Good morning. It's so good to be here with you again this morning. Uh, been a lot going on in my life this weekend uh, as I celebrated my 80th birthday with my family and friends and it made me know how generous God is and how wonderful and blessed I am. Not wonderful I am, but just blessed I am. My family's wonderful. Uh, our Sun School lesson today is titled, Created, Loved, Known. Those three, three words are really meaningful uh, and hopefully we'll delve into that this morning. We have quite a few prayer requests. I went through the constant contact and dug out some. So if you'll remember these in your prayers this week, Jim Williams, April Brown, Lynn Dickinson, the Geyser family, Mike Nolan, Abby Lurch, Kay Gibson, Kathy Marikoff, Christy Grindstaff, Tom Vinson, Lois Sutton, and Betty Irvin. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Our scriptures today are Genesis 1, 27 and Psalm 139, 13 through 18. Genesis 1, 27. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them, male and female. God created them. And then our next scripture is Psalm 139, 13 through 18. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I am in my mother's womb. I give you thanks. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in the secret place, when I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any of them had but happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they outnumber grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I'd still be with you. And the key verse here is, you are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I am marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. And the purpose of our lesson today is to respond in awe and gratitude to the powerful God who created us and the loving God who knows us. We're beginning uh, this new series today during the Advent season with the purpose of understanding our God, Jesus, us relationship. God sending Jesus to earth in human form makes, us po makes possible the relationship God wants to have with us. The two scriptures are an attempt to understand God as a transcendent, transcendent divine supreme above and beyond us, and God is present with us and for us. So he's above us, but yet he's with us. They remind us that we are known by God and can know God deeply, intimately, as God knows us. How can we know God? Through the things around us in nature, and that's known as natural theology. The theology of Luther, Calvin, and Wes the Wesleys rarely talk about natural theology. These reformers wrote mostly about sin and, their, and our human condition. They regularly labeled humans 
as fallen or corrupted. Paul and other biblical writers wrote things such as, some of the redeemed were fools because of their sinful ways. They suffered because of their wickedness. But then Paul in Romans 1.20 wrote, ever since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, God's eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen because they are understood through the things God has made. Therefore, natural theology. We contrast this natural theology to, to revelation, whether from scripture, tradition, or experience. Many think that natural and revealed theology oppose each other but perhaps we can pick between them to get a better understanding of who God is and who we are. We get to know someone by spending time with them. The same with God. We can talk with him, be quiet with him, and wait for him to respond with our innermost thoughts and witnessed results, and we can see what he thinks and know who he is by reading his word in the Bible. Best of all, God wants to be known and wants a relationship with us. Both natural and revealed theology try to answer the all too human question. Why did God create us and why did God place us in this magnificent world? Scripture tells us we are created in God's very image. I looked up the word image because my first thought was that we were create, created inside and outside like God. The definition of image uh, is the representation of the external form. So I think I was half right. Uh, I thought, I believe we have some mental and fit spiritual qualities that make us more desirable to God for a relationship. Whatever, he made us the way he wants us to be and he loves us as we are. To explain evil or human suffering is not possible for us, but this much we know. We can neither explain how nor understand why the grace by which God allows us to live and thrive. Psalm 139 assures us that God rules and overrules God's creation. And not only the whole creation, but also God is sovereign over us, each person God has created. This understanding of both God's sovereignty and God's intimate connection to us and involvement with us are important as we enter Advent and wait for the transcendent God to come near to us in Jesus. God wants to be with us and near us and chose to make it happen through his Son. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we begin this special season of Advent, we want to be close to you, know you, and be known by you. Be with us during this journey and help us make wise decisions. Love others as you love us and be, be kind and let us love our neighbors as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So next week we will begin the new series. We're in a new book and the lesson will be God and human beings. And if you could uh, take time to read the scripture, Psalm 8, one through nine in preparation, then you'll be more ready. Thank you for being here and have a, a blessed uh, week. Thank you.